Hi, welcome. My name is Chris Hendricks, and I am a music composer from Kelowna, British Columbia, Canada. I want to talk in this video series about all things related to production of music. Why? Well, because music is everywhere, be it video game or movie soundtracks, or songs on the radio, or advertisements, or even when you're talking on the phone and you have hold music while you're waiting for somebody to get on the other end so you can finally fix your washer and dryer, music is surrounding us more than at any point in human history. And I think that makes it worth talking about. If you're here as a composer yourself, this video series will give you all sorts of advice about how to make great songs and sound like you're accompanied by a whole team of people and instrumentalists, even if, like me, you're the only one in some room somewhere. If you're not a music composer, but you still love music, I hope that this video series will help you get a bit more of an appreciation of the workmanship and craftsmanship that goes into composing your favorite songs. But before picking up an instrument or even listening to a song, I want to start this video series off on a firm foundation. And that means answering two very basic questions. What is music? And why do we make it and love it so much? Welcome to the first episode of An Orchestra of One. Now this whole question of what is music, that sounds like a pretty simple question. I mean, you know what music is. I know what music is. I've been playing piano since I was five. I was part of endless practicing and recitals and performances and things like that. Surely I should just know what music is. And that's what I would have thought until something happened when I was 20 years old. I was driving home from night shift one early morning when I turned on CBC Radio. Now for those unfamiliar, CBC Radio is Canada's national radio channel. And even during the day, they have quite an assortment of music. They play all sorts of different musical styles, the types of things that most radio stations wouldn't touch. That's during the day. At night, their standards just go out the window and they kind of play whatever eclectic weird thing they want to. And so listening to radio at 4 a.m. on CBC was always an adventure. And on this particular day, they were playing, I kid you not, Symphony Number no. 2 for the Dot Matrix printer. Now, you've probably heard Dot Matrix printers before, right? They, they sound like this. Well, somebody had taken a bunch of different dot matrix printers and made them all print in, in sequence so that they would actually be performing this sort of percussive rhythm. And I'm driving home to this asking myself, does this count as music? Is this music? And I was forced to answer, yes. What is music? What is it that distinguishes music from mere sound? Is an exploding hand grenade music? Is the traffic of a busy freeway music? Do you get music from a rock slide, an avalanche, a waterfall? I would argue in all of those cases, no. Music needs to have some sort of thought, some sort of deliberate arrangement or sequence to it. So with that in mind, let's try this definition of music. A deliberate sequence of sounds. That's pretty good, right? Well, no, because if that is an accurate definition of music, you have been listening to music for the last few minutes because I've been talking. Speech is just a deliberate sequence of sounds, but you don't listen to a politician give a speech on a podium and afterwards say to yourself, well, that was a good song. You don't do that because we understand there's a difference between speech and music. So I would propose this as a final definition for what music is. 
A sequence of sounds arranged so that a listener may appreciate the sounds themselves. It's a little wordy, but I think it pretty much fits everything that would be music. So why do we make music? I mean, it's kind of weird, isn't it? You take these different sounds that have different tones and different speeds and, and qualities to them, and then you arrange them in a sequence for other people to appreciate them. It, it's, it's a very odd thing when you think about it in those kinds of terms. So why do we do it? To answer that question, I'm gonna go to a saying. You may have heard this one before. Music is the universal language. Now that is a weird thing to say because music is horrible as a language. If I play out a little ditty on the piano and then tell you that that is a sentence, well, you have no idea what that is. For the record, I was telling you that a squirrel has eaten your hamburger, but you don't know that because music is horrible at being a language, except when it's not. Music is very good at two things, expressing motion and emotion. Music is great at enhancing action, at moving alongside what is happening to make you feel like you can do that thing. You ever watch a workout video? Those aerobic kinds of videos that's supposed to get your heart pumping so that you can do the step up onto the one stair and step back down again or whatever it is it's asking you to do? It's always this happy, peppy, fast paced kind of thing. Why does it do that? Because the music is coordinating with the action that's going on. Same goes for movie soundtracks. When it's an action packed scene, the music reflects that. When it's an emotional scene, the music just plays those violins right along with it. Music conveys motion and emotion very effectively to the point where it gets stored in your memory for later. You can hear songs from your childhood and feel transported back to that time. Music is also effective as a weapon. There was a Central American dictator who was overthrown and instead of leaving peacefully, he said, no, I'm staying in here and he kind of holed himself up inside and they tried many techniques to coax him out and one of the ones that helped in the end was playing nonstop as loud as possible of heavy metal music. You can't sleep through that. You can't feel like you have the right rhythm through that. Even if you love heavy metal music, there comes a point where it's like, this is enough. Music is a language that can speak to anyone, regardless of their culture, their race, their religion, their belief. It is a very basic tool, but it is a very powerful one. If you want to become a music composer, or if you already are one, ask yourself what it is that you want to do with this tool that you have. Because used wisely, it can affect and bring joy or sadness or any kinds of emotion to large groups of people. And that's pretty special. So how do we make music? Well, in the next video, I'm going to be talking about musical instruments, all the different tools that we have at our disposal to make sound, and there's a surprising number of them. Until then, my name is Chris Hendricks, and thank you for joining me on this journey with an orchestra of one. Bye.